Good evening. thing. <laughs> I'm going to tell on myself here. Oh, blessed rock of angels, cleft for me. Let me tell you why some of this stuff happens. When I was a little boy at the age of 11, I was the church pianist at First Assembly of God in Lexington, Kentucky. And um, so I learned to play all these songs, never paying any attention to the words, especially as an 11 year old. So I would play all these songs that, we, that I'd heard in church all those years because God gave me a miraculous ear. And I never had to sing any of them because I was always playing the piano on Sunday morning, Sunday night. And so I just, there's so many words that kind of come in here half-heartedly and I got stuck. I think as we would sing that song, I probably thought they were singing angels. But I mean, I knew it was ages tonight, but... I've got a weird brain. I'm gonna. I'm just telling you that's the way it is, and I mess up words once in a while, even songs that I've written. So I'm, I'm not exempt from my own insanity. <laughs> hey, it's great, great, great to have you with us tonight. Um, this is an hour with Jesus. For those of you tuning in, maybe for the first time, we meet here every week at seven o'clock. Central Time. You might have seen a misprint on uh, Facebook today that said 8 o'clock, but it's actually 7 o'clock. And um, this coming Saturday, we are having another first Saturday of the month behind the scenes with Liz and myself. That begins at 11 o'clock. You might have seen that published as 12 noon, but it's 11 a.m. Central Time here in Texas, and wherever you are tuning in from around the world. So please be aware of that, all right? And uh, what else do I need to tell you? Oh, we usually have a replay of this uh, show, this program, every Friday. I think it's at 2 p.m. Central Time. The next two weeks, because our technician, Robin, in the Netherlands, is uh, moving into a, a, a different home. And so he will not have internet for the next two weeks while they get new wires run and that kind of thing. So there won't be any replay. But this show will stay 
on YouTube, and you can just watch it as it is. We usually do a replay because he has to get copyright clearances for certain songs, and we don't want them to put a strike against us, and we don't want them to take our program off the air, so we kind of have to play the YouTube game and keep everybody happy. At least we try to. And so that's why we do a replay every Friday. So there's usually a couple thousand people that watch it between now and Friday afternoon. And then two or three thousand more will watch it after that for the next several days and on and on. So that's how that works. You're always welcome to join the replay. There's always a chat window there and folks enjoy talking to each other just like they're doing right now as I'm doing worship around the world. You're welcome to join that chat window and say hello to Liz or to Pat or to new friends that are there. It's kind of a worship family. I decided last week that even though I don't consider myself a pastor, I feel like I'm pastoring a global church every Wednesday night for an hour, which nowadays is about as long as services last anyway. So I'm right in step, am I, am I not? Uh, but it's wonderful to connect with you, to deliver some hopefully presence-based worship and to share a, a few thoughts from God's Word or personal experience that might be a teaching and a help and a guidance to your life. I love doing it. I'm thankful for the opportunity. I'm grateful that you are joining us every week. Many of you are, are faithful to join in every week here, and we're so grateful for it. In a couple weeks, we'll be holding up a brand new CD here to show you, and you can order it, uh, and as many copies as you want for yourself or for Christmas gifts or whatever. It's called Your Kingdom Come, and I'm very excited about it. Did it in the studio with a full orchestra and singers, chorus, and it's very uh, special to my heart. I believe it will be a blessing to you, too. All right, would you like to sing a little bit? Okay, I thought so. <laughs> Bow at your throne. 
of his kingdom, of his reign and rule, there shall be no end. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. What a day that's going to be. And if you're serving him, you shall see that day. That is coming to all of us. And we are on the winning team I love to think about all the victories in Revelation that are coming. Hallelujah. And the way we see things in the world, it seems like it won't be long, doesn't it? We don't know for sure, but we know that he is faithful to complete the good work that he's begun in you and me. All right, a little throwback to a, a chorus from the 80s here. <laughs>
exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord.
just to be, Lord, in your presence. That's where I see brand new. tune into this program needing a touch of some sort physical touch spiritual touch touch of forgiveness touch of deliverance Spirit's here to do that as we worship. Come seek the Lord while he may be found in the sanctuary. His praise resounds on In the sanctuary is right. 
over every sickness, every infirmity, every spirit of infirmity, every besetting sin, every addiction, every sorrow, every heartbreak. Cover all of it with the blood of precious Jesus. It's your word that says you heal all our diseases. I believe you do, Lord. You heal all our diseases.
here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hope you're being blessed tonight by something that's going on. Sometimes he, he ministers to people in ways I have no idea about. <laughs> wow. I'm going to read a little bit here just for a few moments from Revelation and tell a little quick story. You know, um, we have to be vigilant in this day and age. Unfortunately, I have to tell on myself and the whole Christian community. We are if not the most gullible, among the most gullible group in the entire universe. Some of that is not our fault because love believes and hopes and endures all things. But at the same time, Scripture tells us to be wise as serpents, gentle as doves, I just want to read uh, a little bit from the 12th chapter of Revelation, if I can find it. The seventh verse. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated. Can I just say that part again? This is prophecy, folks. This is what's coming. And the dragon and his, and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. That's good news and that's bad news because you know what's coming. And the great dragon was thrown down. The, uh, the ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. All right, so I'm going to talk about that for a minute tonight. 
I'd like to keep going because it gets better. Because <laughs> it says later that they overcame him. That's you and me. By what? The blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Liz, Liz has this problem with God not getting rid of Satan before he casts him down to earth. Believe me, if I was in charge, if she was in charge, we probably would have done that. But we've got to know that there is an element of wisdom that we are not privy to. There is an element of a sovereign plan that we have no idea about. We've had this discussion many times. If God knew that Satan was going to fail and fall, why didn't he just X him out right there? I don't know, but I didn't create the heavens and the earth. She says, my favorite answer to anything is, I don't know. <laughs> then she says, why do you say that? I go, I don't know. Okay, onward. So, we've got to be aware of deception. Deception is undetectable by natural means. If you could see it, it wouldn't be deception. Another place in Revelation, it talks about that even the elect, if possible, would be deceived. That's how incredibly sly and sharp the deception of the dragon is. That one called Satan, who had so much power in heaven that it went to his head and he wanted to be, as scripture says, like God. I will be like God. That's where he made his big pride mistake. And that's when God says, that's it, no more. And he cast him out. But friends, he goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if you don't have your spirit ears on, you will hear things that you will not get. And it will eat your lunch. You will follow a path you shouldn't be on. Deception is, has never been more rampant than it is right now. I have yet to meet a political leader who does not operate in some form of deception to gain power for his own name. You name the leader, I can point out the deception. <laughs> oh my goodness, it doesn't take long. I know pastors around the world who have used deception to build their church or to build their ministry. I would say that I've been guilty of deception from time to time, and I know I've been deceived from time to time. What I'm saying is we've got to turn up the radar so that when something hits our, our, our spiritual monitor, there's a filter it goes through and says, is this truth or is this the, Satan, the father of lies planting a seed to grow and to bring great deception on the earth. He comes only, I was reminded this week, the enemy comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. For he is a liar and in fact the father of all lies. We need to be aware Friends, we've got to be sharp in these last days. I don't know how many years you have left. I don't know how many weeks. Some of you only have weeks left. Some of you may only have days left. But we need to put our hand to the plow and not look back and operate in truth and take this kingdom and be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, a lyric in my, in my song, uh, Your Kingdom Come, says, Lord, make us soldiers of your truth. Can't remember the words around that right now. But that's so important that we would in this last day stand up as soldiers of truth, not go along with the popular uh, sway of people, but take a stand for truth. I think I've told some of you that I, I saw my dad the last week of his life and I walked into his room and he was staring at a point in the carpet 
And the Holy Spirit just spoke to me as he sometimes does. And I knew I was getting a rhema word from God. And he said, he's been staring at that for the last many minutes, looking back over his life and regretting what he didn't do for me. That hit me hard right then. I don't want to get to the end of my life and look back and say, I was afraid to try this. I was afraid to make this statement on Facebook or on social media or in the street or at the bank or in church. I wanted to, but I was afraid of what people might think. I was afraid of the repercussions, the consequences. So I didn't. I don't want to be staring at that carpet like my dad who loved God, who was a great, great servant of the Lord. I, was, I admired my father for how he walked with God. But friend, don't come to the end of your life, whether it's a few days from now or a few decades from now, and look back and say, I didn't want to step out because. When the Lord says, hey, I've got a destiny for you. But you have to walk in my destiny. You have to walk in truth. You have to walk in faith. And you have to be led by my voice and not follow the voice of a stranger. So I guess this message is, is twofold. It's to say, God, give us wisdom. You said that if we ask for wisdom, you will give liberally to us especially now in this generation. Give us wisdom to know what is truth and what is not truth, what is deceit and deception, because we know the enemy is turning up the heat on every hand. And then, Lord, help us to take bold steps of faith, walking in your truth and accepting your call to us, whether it's a call to witness to a neighbor whether it's a call to begin a small a ministry in a, in a storefront or in a living room someplace. I want to do all I can while it's my turn. It won't be my turn forever. It's my turn on YouTube right now. That's why I'm here every Wednesday. I was thinking, man, I would like to take a coast-to-coast -coast tour next year with the new album. I don't know how I can do that and remain faithful to an hour with Jesus. But if it's God's will, he'll make a way. I don't know how. I'm seeking him for that. But it's the hour to put our hand to the plow, not to shrink back in fear and say, oh, we better not do that because I heard this on the radio this morning and they're forecasting this for 2022 and 2024 and 2026. We're going ahead with Sing Over America 2022. I'm still putting the whole thing together. I don't have anything put together. But we're taking that step. That's a, that's a step of faith. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how to pay for it. I just know that I'm going to do it. If it falls flat on its face, I'm going to come to the end of my days and go, but I gave it all that I had. Instead of saying, well, we didn't fall flat on our face, but we didn't accomplish anything either. Am I, am I being received tonight? I hope that I am. I hope it's getting through to you. So I want to be more like you.
I hope the worship was beneficial to you. I hope you've spent an hour with Jesus tonight. Don't forget this Saturday morning at 11, p 11 a.m. Central Time, behind the scenes, we invite you to come and chat with us. Ask us any question you want. We'll do our best to answer it. Find out a little bit more about the ministry. Go to our website if you want to make a donation or become a glory partner. Newglory.org. That's all there is to it. We love you. We thank you for joining us tonight. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Let's be more like Him. Let's do His will and do His work and build His kingdom while it is still yet day. Because the night is soon coming when no man can work. God bless you. It's been great with you again. Until I see you again, for Liz behind the camera, bye-bye for now.